guests. There's no I in team, but there's two in Kristen. <laughs> Columnist and author of the new book, Government Gone Wild, Kristen Tate. She's business in the front and extra business in the back. <laughs> Fox wow. Business anchor, what? Liz Clinton. <laughs> His favorite cologne is gravy. Comedian Tim Dillon. <laughs> And she's performed in more casinos than an Elvis impersonator. Sitting right next to me, comedian Bonnie McFarlane, author of You're Better Than Me, a memoir. And co-host of the podcast, My Wife Hates Me, wow, on so Riot Cast. <laughs> okay, let's start the show. Great Britain voted to exit the European Union, and the elites were sure surprised. Certain pointy heads in this country are busy trying to convince us that the Brexit vote has little bearing on U.S. politics, but that's not true. Brexit was about people taking control of their own country and its borders. It was about average citizens versus the global elites, and it was about unapologetic nationalism. These are issues Americans are waking up to, but the elites in this country, just as in Europe, have little interest in the citizens' interests. Their solution? Call them racists. Just do a search for Brexit Explained to see how the mainstream media Eurosplains the issue. Like New York Magazine in its 1,500-word essay, The American Idiot's Guide to Brexit. They summed up the Leave argument this way. The short answer is that the EU is kind of a hot mess right now. Also, a lot of British people aren't crazy about Polish immigrants. You see, if you're for anything short of surrendering sovereignty of your country to a group of faceless bureaucrats in a faraway city, you're a dumb bigot. Keep it up, guys. That didn't work in Europe, and it won't work here. This fall, you may be as surprised as they were. Wow, that was such a good monologue. I don't even, I don't even know where we can go with this, Bonnie. Well, <clears throat> I did a little research, and I think a lot of people might know, not know too much about Brexit, but I'll explain it right Oh, you now. can explain it. I can. It is... Brexit is the word Britain yeah. and existentialism, and they put them together. <laughs> oh, they did? Yes. Why yes. didn't they call it pre-existentialism then? Why did uh, they well, you know, that's hard for a lot of people to say. Uh -huh. Brexit, you I know, see. that makes sense. What do you think about Brexit? Well, I don't know a lot about politics or economics, so I am a Tory, spelt with an I. Um, <laughs> it's from my 90210 days. Uh, but I, I do know about people and especially young people, and they will take any opportunity to call someone a racist. That's true, isn't they it? They love it. It's their passion. And that's, they, they've done it in Europe. They're doing it here. Right, Tim? Look, uh, yeah. dozens of stories, yeah. British newspapers, American newspapers, sure. about the wave of intolerance that's been sweeping England after this vote. Yeah. But there's no real proof for it. I mean, I hate Polish people. Well, and, you know, it's number one, number one, and I and I do it quietly. I see. Every day, I hate them. Uh, I love that there was leaflets, and I don't love this, but it was. It is funny. They were passing leaflets out after the Brexit called "Leave Polish Vermin." Come on, that is funny. I'm Irish. Look, if I saw a leaflet that said, "Hey, Irish Vermin, get out of here." I would, it would not ruin my day. I would laugh. Yeah. So I think we're suffering from no sense of humor. Well, you know what? You know what's interesting? That those leaflets, yeah. they weren't handing them out on oh, the street. Well, they they were depositing them in mailboxes, which oh. makes me think that yeah. the people behind them were the... Were the the you know, Polish? What yes. No. What I'm oh. saying is that they're busy calling <laughs> they're busy calling yeah. the Brexit people racist. Uh, right. So I think they stuck these phony things in there. Yeah. I don't think there was any racist behind I that. I think that it's the easy argument to say somebody's a racist. If somebody disagrees with you now, the left in this country feels like they're trying to kill you. That yes. is such a bigoted yeah. thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. I Liz, I'm sitting here. Tell, look, this is, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think that they're in denial, that they're saying, well, this is just a British thing. It has nothing to do with American politics. All I have heard is that this is a mutiny against the elites. Oh, it's a mutiny against the liberals who were pro-Europe. <laughs> it's a mutiny against conservatives. It's a mutiny against migrants. Who's left? Come on, this is a very simple story of people who felt that they were left out of the economic explosion or implosion, as it were. Yes. And they start to feel that they, they really weren't getting pulled in and along for the ride. And, and so we understand how they feel, certainly. And it is the will of the people. And now it's no longer a counterfactual. You can't sit there and say, well, what if we were to break away? Now they have, and now we'll see. So we're yeah. watching. I mean, well, this can who's be. Who's next, ugly do you think? Or? 
The, the next countries that are in line, do you think France? Do you think. Uh, well, you've heard about Frexit. Okay, yes. there's now Frexit, at least that agitation. There's France, Czech yeah. out, Czech Republic. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. Austria, Austria, and then. Well, that was a harder one to come up with. Was, yeah. Yeah. How about this one, Bonnie? It it's does. a leave. It to leave. So oh, who knows? Somebody it's out. very complicated. I feel like this like reminds me of like sister wives when the one wanted to go. It's how, who gets what. It's yeah. Very Look, complicated. Kristen, I think you agree with my monologue, don't you? I do. <laughs> there we go. Look, the working class Brits are sick of the elites telling them to sit down and shut up and accept open borders. These migrants that are flooding Europe and Britain, they are unvetted and they are causing crime rates to spike and they're a drag on the economy. It's not racist to not want to be stabbed or mugged by a migrant. It's not racist mm. to want your hard earned tax dollars to support a non working, <laughs> for, a non -working foreigner. Do you think uh, it is? He's calling it's not racist. Racist. This is, yeah. It sounds to this one yeah. I hear. It's yeah. not racist to not want to be stabbed by a colored. Okay. <laughs> it has nothing not. to do with race. It's not. It's not. It has to do with race. I don't want to be stabbed by anyone. Polish people are white. And they, <laughs> hate, they hate another white group. Yes. Polish. They want the Polish out. Well, uh, everyone should get behind that. Why were they ever behind this idea, Kristen, that they shouldn't be in control of their own borders? They're, they're not behind this idea, but it's very easy for the elites, the beautiful people in London who control... There are no beautiful Brits. people in London. <laughs> well, it's Just very easy for the that. more privileged people yes. to look down their nose at the peasants because these, these ruling, the ruling class, they're surrounded by armed guards. That's right. They're so out of touch. But, Tom, but you know, they're fascinating to think that Fleet Street, the big banks, that's code for big banks, they didn't win this one. They would have liked very much to have the ability to have this cross-continental right. trade and yeah. all of this mm -hmm. business. Yeah. They didn't win this one. This was truly the will of the people, and we'll see how it goes. You know what else is similar between the, uh, the Brexit and this country? Can we show that picture? Look, I think, you know, you know Boris, who's... Uh, Bojo. Boris yeah. Johnson. Yeah, Boris, take a look at those. This, it's oh, kind of... <laughs> two heroes. Are we going to have two yellow-haired rulers in our, yeah. in our future? Maybe. That looks like Daryl Hammond doing <laughs> Donald <laughs> Trump. Does. <laughs> it does, but that's Boris. And he might be the next prime minister. Hmm, who knows? Okay, next, next story. Disagree with the Democrats on global warming? Prepare to be investigated. The new platform of the Democratic National uh, Committee thought police... Oh, that's the, I, I read it wrong. I suppose there was a joke in there. The new Democratic National Thought Police calls for the Department of Justice to, quote, investigate alleged corporate fraud on the part of fossil fuel companies who've reportedly misled shareholders and the public on the scientific reality of climate change. Basically, what that means is if you're a coal producer that disagrees with the Obama administration, you're screwed. Currently, three state attorneys general are investigating Exxon and two AGs demanded records on conservative think tanks and scientists that are skeptical of liberals' climate alarms. Republicans, Republicans call it an attack on free speech and were quick to point out that if it is possible to minimize the risks of climate change, then the same goes for exaggeration. If minimization is fraud, exaggeration is fraud. What a great point.